Brian, congratulations on an incredible victory for you. Don't seem to be a guy that gets too caught up in the moment, but I got to ask you, I mean, the emotions right now, stepping in on short notice, facing a legend, becoming the first guy to finish him. What's it feel like right now? Maybe not right now. Passing the bill, like... No, I mean, I feel very happy, you know, like, I, I told the training was really, like, right here, I was screaming and jumping, you know, but outside, I, I really want to show respect for all of my opponents, you know, I know sometimes in this game, you know, you would knock someone out and we run around, and that's just not my style, you know, sometimes I've done it before, you know, I'm human, I can't help it, but, I mean, I've seen it before, I've, in, in my mind, I already, I've done this, you know, so, when I've seen it live, I was just like, okay, Stay cool, bro. Stay calm, stay collected, you know what I'm saying? Be professional, you've been here before. In your mind, but you've been here before. Very nice. Give an idea as the fight was playing out, because Frankie was having some success early, you know, sticking and moving, using speed and angles the way he does. How did you feel things were playing out early? Did you feel you were a step behind or concerned at all? Uh, I wasn't really too concerned, you know. Uh, the way I looked at it was, let me see what this guy's going to bring to the table real quick. Let me try to figure out his plan. Um, he came in, he was sticking, he was moving. I didn't see him trying to wrestle, so I put some pressure on him. And then once I really relaxed in there, then I started throwing my shots and landing them, and I was just figuring my, my own self out. And once I did, you know, that was it. Seems like the natural fight next is for the title, Max Holloway. I mean, I know it hasn't been very long, but did you get to have any conversations in the back? Dana, matchmakers, anybody else? Is, have you been told that that's what's next? Uh, I've been told, but I really want to talk to, to the main you know, to the main bosses and find out if that's true or not before I get too excited. You know, I don't want to get too excited and then have it shut down and then I'm going to be all broken. So I'm just, I'm just kind of playing it by it goes and that's that's the next, you know, in my opinion, I feel like that should be the next fight. Yeah. And last thing for me, right, obviously that'll, if, if that is the fight, it'll depend on Max getting healthy. But as far as you're concerned, I mean, how quickly would you like that to happen? Um, well, right now, I want to just take maybe a little vacation, you know, go surfing, uh, some black belt surfing, and um, and pretty much that's it. Once I get some waves and uh, go go back home and adjust a little bit, go back to the Grace University, go teach some classes, go back to the to the normal me, not the fighter me, like the real, like the outside of fighting person who I am, enjoy that Brian for a little bit, and then get back to work. I've always said it, and maybe the, the way I fight doesn't really show it. Yeah, I feel like you really have to be in there with me to feel the way I am. And I said it, pick your poison, you know, we can bang it out or we can go to the ground. I'm comfortable either way and I feel like, you, you know, either, no matter what happens in the fight, I'll be all right. In the finishing shot, I know you heard him with the elbow, but when you hit him with that uppercut, it's almost like you left your feet uh, to do that. Have you ever, like, you know, sometimes when you hit a really good shot, you can feel it all the way through your body. Did you ever feel like you were in a stronger shot than that particular punch? Oh, absolutely. I, I took my time in trying to finish him. I knew he was robbed. And when I seen that opportunity to throw an uppercut, I mean, I, I threw it with, um, I threw it with bad intentions, you know. I don't want to have bad intentions going right in there. I had have, I have bad intentions on when I threw that one and it landed right on the top. So, I mean, this sort of doubles what John asked, but as Max has tweeted us tonight already, sort of UFC 226, uh, that's a good What's, what's the date? July. July. International. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, whether negatively or positively, I'm just curious, did the short notice at all affect you know, what, what you did in there and you know, what you felt like you couldn't? I mean, with the full training camp, oh, I feel like you're always going to get a better version of myself. I'm always training, I'm always in the gym, no matter where I'm at, I'm always working out. And so, you know, when they gave us a call, they said three weeks, I got no problem. And then they said it was going to be a main event. It was like, can can it be done? Can I have the Brian Ortega cardio that I always have in three weeks? And we were debating a little bit in the room when we were training. And I said, you know what? The ultimate, the ultimate decision was, let's do the five rounds. And we chose five rounds, and a week later, they said, you're, 
he got bumped in co-main event, Cyborg saved the card, and three rounds. So it almost was like a tiny relief, but I was ready. Did you feel like safe up there? I feel like this thing's gonna crash down right now. <laughs> Like, you know, like those Final Destination movies? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was curious, you, uh, you brought up your charity that you started. I'm just curious if you could just uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what that does in the community. Yeah, absolutely. The Brian Taylor Foundation is catered to all people who, who have all kinds of problems, you know? And I'm slowly, surely building it. My first steps have already been taken. I'm finishing the website right now. I've already, all the money that I made from my last fight, I spent making the foundation. And now it's, it's kind of, it's, it's set in motion and it's good to go. I feel like there's a, like I said before, there's a lot of love that needs to be shown and there's some plans I'm doing what's called the T-City Scholarship where I'm going to sponsor four to five uh, people to train one full year, one full free year at the Grace University and then I'm going to go out to all the hospitals in LA and go visit the kids over there and spread some love. Hey Brian, how much did you, how much did you weigh tonight? Oh man. <laughs> oh man. Top secret. I was a little fatty tonight. I, uh, <laughs> yesterday, I weighed myself at 145. Today, I was at 164. When you stepped in the octagon, because I think we all saw it, when you see that size advantage against Frankie, do you get like maybe a little too excited about what you can do with that, or how do you confront that? No, well, the way I felt was like, if this guy really wants to be on the ground right now, I'm gonna be a heavy blanket. So that's that's what I was thinking in my head, you know, and obviously if you're striking, the more weight you gain, the harder that your punch is gonna be. Ryan, tomaste algo de la pelea que tuvo Frankie ante, ante Pantera para obtener esta victoria? No, porque mi 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 plan es la de que ahora que siempre tumba, pues yo Yo tengo mejor, en mi opinión, mejor piso, juego de piso que, que uh, Yair. Pero él quiso ser el striking conmigo todo el tiempo. Y pues dije, ¿sabes qué? Él no me quiere tumbar, no quiere hacer ninguna derrota. Y pues en ese caso, pues a tomar la ventaja de eso y a empezar a, tirar, a crear sus puñetazos. Y sí, sí fue por mis pies una vez, casi le agarró el cuello. Y yo creo que, que tuvo temor de, de, de llevarme al piso. Y, Pues también todos tomamos la ventaja de eso, cuando se metió tiramos los codos porque ya sé que es más pequeño, tiene pues mis brazos largos, no puede tirar cuando está dentro del de mi cara y si no puedo tirar los brazos, tirar los codos, es lo que dice. Perfecto, muchas gracias. Gracias. Felicidades. Hey, uh, Brian, it's just to right. Real quick question about something that you said to Joe Rogan right after the fight. You mentioned that uh, this is your dreams and you envision all this, you see it happening, but then you also said that I I have envisioned my fears too, like my fear of being knocked out. Can you, yeah. That's something that we, we don't really hear much, you guys talking about the fear of being knocked out before a fight. Can you talk a little bit more about it? It's a, honestly, it's a balanced scale, where as much as I dream, as much as I have nightmares. Where when I go in there, you know, like, maybe like the fight week, I'm like, man, maybe this guy's, maybe I'm gonna be that guy that's on the higher that really gets knocked out. Um, maybe, you know, this is going to happen, this, maybe I can get submitted. So I'm always thinking, like, what if these things happen to me, how am I going to react, how would I react, am I going to be a sore loser, like, I better be humble, like, almost like checking myself, you know, if something bad happens, and then the other half is, like, positive thoughts, it's weird, it's a crazy mental game that I go through before I fight, um, but it usually ends up battling itself out, so I feel like that's what I'm calm after, no matter what, because I almost... In my mind, I've lived both experiences, so I'm going to know how to react when it happens.